Hey everybody, welcome back to Mixing Music Analog and MixingMusicAnalog.com and here on the YouTube channel. And today we got something really special. My good friend and buddy, and your good friend and buddy here on the channel, Dave, he is gonna give us a behind the scenes look and a studio tour of his hybrid home studio, which is really cool. I think you guys are really gonna enjoy this. So about three weeks ago, we released a three video series, Dave and I, on called, How Did We Get Here? How did we install the studio that, uh, that is sitting behind me? Everything from installing the console, all the things that we learned, all the different uh, things that we did wrong, things that we got right, and we talked through that over the last three videos. If you haven't seen that yet, make sure you go and check out the archives and check that out. In one of those last videos, we talked about showing a more uh, scaled down hybrid setup for those of you that are looking to get into hybrid, but certainly aren't ready to start jumping into a full inline console and or uh, two full racks of gear. You wanted something more scaled down, a more, uh, for lack of a better word, beginner's entry level to getting into the world of hybrid. Now, Dave Studio is certainly not entry level, meaning that he just didn't he, only, he just didn't start yesterday, but he has a, a couple of handful pieces of gear in his studio and it's set up in his home studio, which is a bedroom studio. A lot of us started off in the bedroom studios. A lot of us are still in bedroom studios. And Dave Studio is a great example on how you can start to build a very small hybrid setup. So this is gonna be part one of I think two or three. Leave comments below and let Dave know what other things you'd like to see or you'd like him to talk a little bit further about in his studio. So this is gonna be really cool. So before we get to Dave's studio tour, make sure you like, share, subscribe. Also, make sure you hit the thanks button right up beneath this video here uh, and give us a small donation. It really does help support what we do here and allows us to keep making these videos for you. So if this channel is helping you in any way, shape or form, and I know it's helping a lot of you because you've told me so, go ahead and hit the thanks button. It really, really does help. All the pertinent links will be in the description box below. So now without further ado, let's check out Dave's studio over in his home up in the countryside of New York. Hey guys, uh, welcome to my studio. Uh, I know I've talked about it a few times on the channel and different things, but I do have an actual, as you can see, a uh, true bedroom studio. Uh, my apartment is a mother-in-law apartment built on the back of the farmhouse on the family farm here in New York. And uh, I, so it's kind of small and I'm very limited as to space that I can utilize. So I have to be very careful. Uh, as you can see, it's pretty much fitting in between those two windows. I have exactly five feet of space between those two windows to work the studio in. So I've always had to be very careful considering how I put it together and what I add to it and what direction I can go with it. Uh, so let's just start with the basics in it. Um, my desk is an output platform desk. This is the uh, driftwood gray color. Uh, I was expecting to be a little bit more gray than it is. It tends a little bit more towards the greenish side. I think that's because of the wood choices, but uh, for the price of the desk, it's been more than adequate. It is exactly five feet wide, so it fits in that hole perfectly. And it has the uh, three, uh, three, bay, three bays of uh, rack space, three rack spaces each. I did opt to not add the uh, slide out keyboard tray instead opting for this small clamp on keyboard tray that I got off of Amazon. This does slide into the bottom of the desk if I needed to, when I need to get around it and stuff, but I didn't want it to get too fancy. Um, I'm gonna sit down in my chair here. So excuse the, creak, the creaky chair, my apologies for this. Uh, my computer over here on the side. Yes, I am one of those people that I actually do build my own computers. Uh, this is an AMD Ryzen 9 3900 12 core processor. I put uh, 32 gigabytes of uh, 3600 speed memory in it and a bunch of SSDs and drives in it. So uh, it pretty much does only the studio and it's a lot of horsepower and storage for the studio. Uh, which uh, is a good thing. You know, the more horsepower you can get out of that computer, the better. And build, putting that together was a lot cheaper than putting a Mac together. Um, I do run two monitors. The lower monitor, my main monitor, is a 2K uh, 1440p monitor. And then there's have a 1080p on top of it. I just throw like uh, secondary stuff like analyzers and other plugins and stuff that get thrown on the top screen while I primarily work in the bottom screen. Um, I do use Reaper. 
uh, and that is Reaper right there, but that is not the standard Reaper skin. That is a skin called the LCS Luna. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how much it does look like the Luna doll, but it really fits my eye, and I very much enjoy using that particular skin. I've tried a bunch of them, and that's the one that I basically settled on as mine. Um, my main monitors are a pair of Head 07 Mark IIs. I've had those for about maybe a little less than a year now. And they do also have the uh, associated eight inch subwoofer underneath. Uh, those are really very good monitors. Uh, they're, they're very level, very smooth. They're not loud uh, as compared to some of the other monitors that I've used, but uh, they do sound really good and they work for me in this room very well. Uh, as you can also see on top of those, I have a pair of Yamaha HS5s. They are not hooked through the uh, subwoofer. Um, those are basically what I use. I don't want to use the word crap speaker, but they are basically my second monitor and I use them to like check mid-range and high, check for mid-range and high-end problems. Uh, there's no low end and no speakers at all with the, with the five inch woofer. So they're very good at helping you mod, you know, close in on mid range issues and other things like that. Uh, on my desktop, I do have a uh, Nectar Impact keyboard, MIDI keyboard for when I do do some music stuff. I don't play music or record music nearly as much as I used to. Uh, concentrating now more on the mixing and mastering end of things, but I still will occasionally like to play around, so that's my keyboard. I do have a uh, PreSonus fader port, single fader port. Um, I did have a fader port 16 for a while in here, uh, and as much as I wanted it to fit my workflow, it just didn't get the job done for me. It was just too much. I was mainly using it for transport control and you like single fader uh, inputs and, and automation. So what was the point of having 16 faders on the table when you're only using one? So I got rid of that and just opted back to a single fader port. Uh, my monitor controller is the Audient Nero. And I cannot recommend that unit enough. That is an incredible unit. Uh, really good, has lots of input and outputs. Uh, I used to have more plugged into it than I do now but it's really good for what it does. Um, I use a pair of Sennheiser HD 600s plugged into that for direct monitoring out of that thing. And uh, you'll see in a minute that I also have a secondary set of monitor, uh, a secondary monitor amplifier and stuff underneath the desk as well. Um, as far as like, Getting into the uh, outboard gear that I do have in the studio, um, just mentioning it really quick, power, power is being provided by a pair of Furman PL8Cs on the desk, and those are running everything that's on top of the desk, including all the monitors and video monitors and everything else are all being run through those. Um, over here on the left is a Black Lion uh, B172A. That is a dual compressor. On the left is the 17 side. That is a FET compressor based upon basically the 176 or 1176 style. And then on the right is the 2A compressor, which is an optical compressor. Unlike an LA-2A, there is not a tube in there. I think they should have called it a 3A if you ask me. But uh, again, uh, does a very good job on the optical. Uh, on that particular compressor, I think the optical, I think, is a better representation of optical than the one the 17 side is of a FET compressor. That's a good FET compressor, but I don't think it's anything all that special. But uh, as a unit working together, it's really very good. And uh, you can, using the dual link mode in the middle, you can either link have them unlinked in which case you're sending a signal into each side separately. You can compress one side as a 170, as a FET, or you can press the other side as a, an LA-2A style compressor. But then you can cascade them together. You put this to the left, it goes FET into 2A. And if you put it the other way, it goes 2A into the FET and then back out. So you can actually stack your compressors very simply in that unit with just that one knob um, in the middle is 
my latest, well, not my latest uh, purchase, but the most significant purchase I've made is my Solid State Logic Fusion, which of course was, oh, sorry about the shaky video, I'm doing the best I can, guys, sorry. Uh, the Fusion, of course, was inspired directly from Dave's studio. Uh, that is an unbelievably good unit for finishing, putting on your master bus, using in mastering situations. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, it's just amazing and probably worth every penny that you pay for it. It is not a cheap unit, but as an investment piece, it's definitely worth having. Um, above that is my warm audio bus compressor. Um, when I first got the warm audio bus compressor, I liked it. Uh, I very much enjoyed using it, but it wasn't anything spectacular to me. I mean, it was it was a bus compressor, but it, it wasn't doing anything that I thought was really amazing until I got the Fusion and I started plugging that unit into the, the uh, insert loop on the Fusion. You plug that into the insert loop on the Fusion, you can put it either pre or post EQ, but before the uh, before the high frequency compressor and before the widening. And I don't know what that loop does as opposed to just running it in through a patch bay, but that compressor came alive. And it just sounds amazing when you plug it in through that insert point. So I don't know what's going on with that, but... Uh, that's a pretty incredible unit now, and I'm very happy to have that. And again, something I would highly recommend you guys try out sometime if you're looking for a bus compressor. Over on the right is one of my oldest pieces. That's an ART uh, Pro VLA2. That is a stereo optical compressor with a tube preamp section. Uh, some people do mistake that as a tube compressor. It's not. It's not a Mu style compressor. It is an optical, but it does use a pair of tubes, one on each side on the uh, on the preamp stage. Now, I did do a modification to that. I did pull the Chinese brand tubes out of it, and I put a pair of uh, JJs in there, the 12 AT7 JJs, and that had an amazing effect on the clarity and just overall feel of that compressor i mean supposedly like if you ask glenn fricker tubes don't matter but in that compressor tubes mattered so if you were interested in trying something like that i mean it's a relatively inexpensive unit and it's worth the investment of adding another 50 dollars worth of tubes to it it just makes a huge difference in that compressor i use that you know in mastering a lot and, uh, you know, you would think that in mastering you would want, you know, like well, most of your mastering guys have these like really super expensive compressors. That compressor is really good. Uh, just, just a great optical smoothing out compressor. Uh, definitely highly recommended. If you're ever looking for something like that, it's a good place to start. Uh, oh, over here, by the way, that is my, uh, that's an Audio-Technica AT2020 USB mic that I use for Skyping and when I make videos, when I make videos, which is not very often in the box anymore these days, I want to get my channel going again. But uh, that's a decent, it's a decent uh, microphone, and it just makes the USB just makes integrating into uh, OBS so much easier for me, at least. So I, I tend to just stick to that, even though I've got better mics. It's it's the one I use all the time. Um, down here on the left side sidecar. Um, that is a 12 space Odyssey rack. Uh, this is actually the, that's the newer of the two racks I have. Um, that is my Focusrite. That's the Claret 8 Pre, the original, not the new version. Uh, I bought that a while back uh, when I wanted the extra IO to use some of the hardware. And I've said then, and I'm gonna say now, that's probably the last in, the last interface I'm ever going to buy unless something happens to it. I'm never going to buy another interface. That thing does everything I ever ask it to do and more. Um, as you see underneath it, I have a blank space. Uh, that is in preparation for adding some kind of an Octopre, either a Scarlet or a Claret Octopre at some point to get some more I.O. for the hardware. Uh, the way the Claret is uh, set up. I've only got 
three stereo pairs coming out of it that I can use because the first stereo pair is to the monitors and then the last stereo pair is being used for a headphone mix. So it only leaves me the six, the six input and outputs left to use for that. But uh, it's enough for now, but I'm gonna hopefully be adding more this year. Uh, underneath that is the Aphex 204, which, you know, a sadly discontinued unit. Uh, that is the big bottom, which is a great name, uh, the big bottom uh, oral exciter. Uh, David has two of those in his studio. I have one. One of the ones that David has in this studio used to belong to me. And I had actually sold that and given it to him to use in that studio. And I replaced it with the Behringer unit for a while. But I, you know, the Behringer unit is fine. I think the Behringer unit might be a DSP unit rather than actually be a circuited unit. And I think the Aphex is just a little bit more refined and just sounds a little better to me. So I went back and I got a deal on that off of Reverb one day and I jumped at it. Uh, underneath that is, that's my latest edition. That is a radial workhorse 10 space uh, 500 rack. Oh, sorry about, sorry about the camera work, guys. This is not as easy as it looks. Uh, that is the latest edition I have. And as you can see, I've got three units in there right now. I have two of the radial ecstasies. One of those is one that I purchased and the other one is from David's studio. He had it in his rack for a while, but it came out because he needed the room for other things. So it's in my rack right now, but honestly, you really only need one. I mean, very rarely am I gonna use a stereo pedal. So I'm thinking I'm probably gonna pull one of them out and sell one off and give myself another rack space. Uh, next to that is the DBX 560A. That is a stock DBX 560A, not modified. And that has just come in here within the past week or so. And I've used it on one mix so far. And I'm going to say it flat out. That's the compressor I've been looking for my whole life. Uh, that thing is amazing. Uh, it's got the selectable uh, over easy button here. So you can either have it as a soft knee or a hard knee compressor in out. It's the hard knee in it's the soft knee, uh, in both modes. It's amazing with in the hard knee setting on a kick or a Tom or a snare. It adds a, a really amazing punch to a, a kick and snare on the over easy setting. It's really good on pretty much everything musical acoustic i've used it on acoustic guitars pianos vocals and it just sounds good it's the compressor i've been looking for my whole life which is amazing it's a 300 dollars 500 rack unit and i'm probably going to get at least get another one or get one of the modified ones something but yeah that is without a doubt the compressor i've been looking for my whole life uh, underneath that is a Lexicon MX300 reverb and reverb unit. Uh, it's a reverb unit. It's it's definitely a digital reverb. Uh, it's a great reverb. It's, there's a lot of really good sounding presets in there and you get tweaking with it a little bit. It's a lot of fun. Uh, something that I tend to run the mix through on a, on a auxiliary send and just to add a little ambiance to the mix overall. Uh, pretty much the same way David is using the Audioscape uh, Spring Reverb <clears throat> is the way I'm using that. Underneath there is one I did, uh, an idea I got from David is that's the Line 6 uh, Echo Pro uh, Stereo Delay Unit. That was originally designed, I think, as a guitar rack uh, delay. It's very complex. There's a whole lot you can do with that. Um, I'm only really using it as like a slapback delay a little bit, so it's probably, you know, you probably aren't using it, getting nearly as much out of it as, as it has available, but it's in the rack and uh, it works. So not too worried about it. Oh, by the way, it's not stereo. I'm sorry. It is a mono reverb. It's not stereo. Uh, under that's a Furman power supply that runs this particular rack. 
And then under that, of course, are my two patch bays. Those are the the Samson. I don't remember the model on them, but it's a uh, they're Samson uh, TRS uh, balanced patch bays. There are two of them, uh, and they're pretty much full except for four points on to the right of each of them are empty at this point. So if I add anything else to this pile, I'm going to have to add another patch bay. Uh, and as you can see, I did leave an empty rack space above them for just that purpose uh, at some point in time. Uh, probably going to have to expand my, uh, you know, my, my patch bays to make more room for some stuff. Uh, then you have in the rack over on the right, excuse my squeaky chair again, in the rack over on the right, is my warm audio WA273 preamp and the WA412 four channel preamp. The WA273 is of course a Neve and the 412 is an API. And those are pretty much being used on my master bus just as preamp ambiance, harmonic distortion, space, uh, basically for me, I use those as pretty much like a stereo summing mixer, uh, just basically running the mix through some hardware, running it through some iron. It's amazing to me how much difference just running a mix through, you know, a mile of copper wrapped around an iron core makes to the sound of a, of a mix, uh. I'm probably going to do a video demonstration of that sometime so that you can hear exactly what I'm hearing and why I use them. But uh, again, it's the kind of thing where if you're looking for like a warm Neve style sound or a more punchy API sound, it's available. Just plug them into the patch bay, run the mix through them, and they make a pretty big difference to what your sound is. Uh, on top of that, which you can barely see, is my drop o2 headphone amplifier that is patched into reaper on their monitor on their monitor uh output section and i have uh room correction uh what am i using i'm using the uh blue blue cat audio rehead and i'm using uh uh tone boosters morfit for headphone correction and then that comes out of the uh comes out of the interface into that headphone amplifier and then I have a pair of Sennheiser HD 660s uh, that I use for that and honestly running that that way with the rehead and the more fit uh, I can sit here and take the headphones on and off and hear pretty much exactly what's coming through the monitors coming through the headphones and it definitely it makes a difference as to how you're imaging on, on a pair of headphones over there on the right is a um, Universal Auto Audio uh, USB Solo and a quad satellite that I use for the USB stuff uh, or the uh, Universal Audio plugins. Uh, bought that originally because I was anticipating Luna coming out and I wanted to try to use Luna, but it doesn't look like they're ever going to get that ported into Windows. So if they ever do, I'm ready for it. But uh, I do have some Universal Audio plugins that I use, and that makes it possible to do it. Uh, overall, like design philosophy down there is, is there's more room in the rack on the right. I do have like a three space rack drawer in there right now, but that can come out, and I can flip things from one rack to the other if I add anything else to it. Um, right now, I am anticipating possibly adding a dbx 160a compressor uh which is a full single rack unit um i'm anticipating possibly adding one of those at some point in time because i like that 560a so much i'm thinking about making that one of my primary deals uh i'm also thinking about possibly adding a pair of the the la3as from who is it uh Crap, I can't remember the name of that. Something project, uh, LA 3 as They're like half. They're like half width, two rack space units. Get two of them, and like I said, I can flip like the reverb unit and the delay 
over to the rack on that side to make room on this side for stuff like that to come in uh, as future expansion. Plus, I've got a bunch of empty 500 rack to fill up, which I'm anticipating um, probably at some point in time going to get a pair of the Rupert Me 542 tape emulator units. I would like to get the SPL DSer. I would like to get the SPL Transient Designer. Uh, and Lindell Audio makes a two space uh, Pultec that could fit in there very easily. So, those are the kinds of things I'm anticipating down the road. But for right now, I'm, you know, this is what I have and where we're at with it. So, uh, it's, it is, again, like I said, it's a very compact studio. It does sound very good in this room. Uh, this room is pretty honest. There is a bit of a bump in the low end in this room, but I actually don't mind that because I like mixing into a little bit of, a little more bass than I think I should. So, knowing that there's a low end bump in the room, I can hear the bass I want to hear, but it won't affect the mix too badly. So, uh, anyway, um, that's just a, you know, like a quick guided tour of what I have available to me in my studio at this point in time. Uh, and uh, if you guys would like to see anything else, if you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. Uh, if you guys have any video uh, video ideas that you'd like to hear from my studio, let me know, and we'll try to work them into some stuff for you. But uh, until uh, we talk again, I've been Dave, and uh, this is uh, where I spend uh, the vast majority of my free time. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care of yourselves.